So in the last video, we covered the prediction step for our variable x bar of t, right? And we said that this was just equal to some matrix A times our best estimate in, in the prior step or in the prior time step, which was denoted x hat of t minus one. And again, the hat, because this is a variable from the update step. So we want the best known value of x so far. And this is gonna happen in the update step. And then to this, we add some matrix B times our external motion mu. And this mu in this case, this right here, represented our acceleration. Acceleration. Right, and then this is just, you know, recap from last video. So I don't wanna to go too deep into this. Hopefully you watched the last video. And in this video, I just wanted to focus more on the other variables of the common filter. And then in the next video, actually do the proof. In this video, I just wanna establish some more variable names and, and what they mean and, and why we've covered them and, and, and named them in, in such a way. So again, this is X bar of T. This is our state prediction. So just as a reminder, this is our state prediction state prediction. And there are a couple of other variables that we predict, namely, there is also z bar of t. And usually, if you look in the algorithms and the linear algebra equations, this z bar of t is usually just done in place, meaning we don't specifically or explicitly calculate this, but I think it's nice to think of it this way. And the z bar of t is just an estimate as to what we're actually measuring. So in the common you know, in the common application of the Kalman filters, we're usually estimating uh, position. And this state variable x bar of t contains both position and velocity. So the z bar of t is just going to extract the position attribute from this vector. So it's very simple. This is just equal to some other matrix C times our predicted x bar of t. And in the case of the position tracking, C is just gonna equal this vector one zero and, and why is this because if we multiply one zero times our position or our estimated position at time t and our estimated velocity at time t what we get is just position at time t right plus zero times velocity so that's you know not not important and what we get is that z bar of t is just equal to the position of t in matrix form even though this is really just a scalar we would put this in, in matrix form so this is what we get from z bar of t now there's another update that we do, I'm sorry, there's another estimate that we do, another prediction, which is for a covariance matrix. And hopefully you know what the term covariance means, but I think it's better and it's more natural to understand and to explain the covariance matrix prediction at the end of the derivation. I just think it makes a little more sense, but the covariance matrix P has a, has a prediction step, so I'll denote it P bar, and it's gonna equal something. And we'll cover this maybe in the next video or whenever we get to the derivation of P and, and the other parts of the algorithm. But just know that the covariance matrix P also has a an update and a prediction step. It has both of those, so we'll also denote P bar. So now that we've actually mentioned the covariance matrix P, I think it's great to talk about it because it plays a crucial role in, in this algorithm. So the covariance matrix P, the covariance matrix P is going to capture the covariance, right? So P is gonna capture the covariance between our state, right, our desired state. Again, this has no modifier. So this is what the actual state would be. Again, we have no way of knowing this. This is why we're doing the filter in the first place, but it's gonna measure the covariance between X of T and our updated X hat of T. Now I know I haven't got into how we calculate X hat of T, but basically in the T, right, in the T time step, we're gonna take a sensor measurement and we're also going to update our prediction. So we're gonna go from X bar of T to X hat of T. And I'll show you this equation in, in a second, but just know that P is gonna capture the covariance between these two. So how, you know, how certain are we that our update is close to the actual state? And, and this is essentially what P is going to try to capture. But before we go on to that, like I said, I wanted to explain how we calculate this X hat of T. So the common filter, like I mentioned earlier, is a linear state estimator. So we have to, appreciate the fact and we have to know the fact that x hat of t is going to come from a linear combination it has to be linear transforms between this prediction the predicted state so x hat of t right x hat of t is going to equal our predicted state which is x bar of t and to this we're going to add a value k which is a matrix and this is the core of the common filter algorithm how we derive this value k which we'll explain but it's going to be plus this value k times z of t, 
right? And again, this has no modifier. So Z is what we're measuring. In this case, Z will actually come from the sensor because this is what we're feeding our, our calling filter is, is certain measurements and certain sensor values. So Z of T, this is what we get from the sensor. So I think it's important to note this. This is what we get from the sensors, right? Our position tracker, whatever we're tracking. In this case, position, if someone, we have a, a, a way to, to measure position, we're gonna get this from the sensor and this is Z of T. And from this, we are going to subtract our estimated, uh, our estimated sensor, our estimated Z of T, which is Z bar of T. I'm sorry, this came out in a different color. Let me just try to fix this. I think this green color is nice. So yeah, anyways, this is the update. This is how we're gonna update X bar of T to become X hat of T. It's gonna come from this equation. And let me just explain this equation because it's, it's a nice equation. Essentially what we're saying is that our updated step is gonna equal our, our estimated plus this, this you know factor. So what is this? This is commonly known as a correction term. So why is this a correction term? Well, we estimated this value over here, right? We, we estimated Z bar of T and when we have that up here in our estimation step, right? We, we just wrote that right up here. This is how we estimated it. And Z of T without any sort of modifiers, what we got from the sensor. So if the subtraction of these two, right? If when we subtract Z of T from Z bar of T, if this is a small value, right? So in essence, if Z of T is close, right? Is, is you know approximately equal to Z bar of T, and this tells us that we have done a very good job of actually predicting the measurement. We've done a pretty good job of estimating our state and estimating what we want to track because the difference between the actual and our predicted is very close, right? And that means we've done a good job in not only estimating what we wanted to estimate, which is the Z of T, but also our state. Why? Because Z bar of T practically depends on X bar of T, right? All we're doing with this C matrix is just extracting a value from X bar of T. So if, if Z bar of T is good, is a good estimate, then so it must be X bar of T because we're just taking a value out from there. So what this means is that if this value is small, then it doesn't really matter what this value K is because it will kind of just, you know, null things out. And then what we get is that our updated step is our predictive step plus very, very small changes. All right. And then this makes sense because if we estimated very well, then our updated should be very close to what we estimated because we, we did a very well, we did a very good prediction. However, if this number is a little large, you know, then it's going to be multiplied by this uh, matrix K, which is called the Kalman gain. And, and this is a very, very important part to the Kalman filter algorithm. This is known as the Kalman gain, G-A-I-N. Sorry, you can't see that. It says Kalman gain, but it's the Kalman gain. And so if this value is a little bit large, then this is usually a scalar in our terms because this is position minus position. So that's going to be a scalar value. So the scalar value multiplied by this matrix, and we're going to add this matrix to our estimated position. Okay, and, and how do we choose this value K? Right, this is where the derivation comes in. This is where the, the good part of the Kalman filter algorithm comes in, and, and we'll do this in the next video because I'm actually almost out of time in, in this video. But again, just think of this like this, right? We're going to add to our predicted step basically a an optimal value, which will nudge us in the direction to our actual state, right? Because we, we've picked up Z of T, so we know what Z of T is. So we're, we're going to try to nudge our way towards the best prediction or the best step towards the actual state X of T. And we're going to store this in this variable called x hat of t. All right. So in the next video, because I'm almost out of time, now we'll we'll talk about this, the covariance, and we'll actually derive the covariance and, and do all sorts of fun math to, to derive it, the proper value for this Kalman gain matrix k.